everybody in the world. Hello everyone and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Coming up on this segment, segment we should have a very interesting segment with the boys. But uh, before we begin, I do want to remind you yet again to leave a tip or donation if you do. here talking about hockey a little bit. I know these two guys are not the biggest hockey guys, but uh, it should be exciting. Obviously, we have a lot of young talent that I kind of want to talk about. Uh, maybe since you're not necessarily hockey guys, I kind of want to get kind of like an analogy as to how you guys view these kind of breakout stars in your respective sports. So just going to start off with a guy I've talked about a lot on the show. If you guys have seen any of my segments, I truly love this guy from the Edmonton Oilers, the young rookie defenseman. Evan Bouchard, incredible fantasy season, one of the leading point scorers for the Oilers in the postseason. So uh, just starting off with you, I guess, Eric, since you're more into like this fantasy mindset, what can you t say about a guy who is young and hungry and just wants to do well, not only in real life but in fantasy? And I just want your thoughts on that because I know you're dabbling in fantasy a little bit here. Yeah, fast. absolutely. Yeah, how about you, Nelson? I know that basketball is another one of those fast-paced games where you you blink and you miss the action. So how do you feel like hockey translates to like this fast pace nature of sports? Well, it is completely different from fantasy basketball. So it's hmm. like, and like you say, like I don't really, I follow hockey, but I don't follow it like that in terms of fantasy. So I can't really say if, it, if you can like compare the two, despite the fact that they have fast pacing and like, not to mention like the schedule with some hmm. of the, uh, basketball games, they kind of interfere with a lot of, and it's really sometimes the matches they're down to like what team is scheduled to play and which players are scheduled to play because if you have zero players scheduled to play on one day, you immediately lose that day in, um, in fantasy, so it's like it kind of stinks like it's not, it's not really like you know how in football where you can everyone is going to play at least some point during the week and it's most likely going to happen like exactly when you need them to happen but it's like there are for basketball there's some players like some key players that you aren't going to be able to play like let's say you need a win on uh the very last day before the week concludes and you have Jokic on your team but guess what Jokic is not playing on that last day you lose and it's really like it's a compl it's completely different because you also have to keep in mind like who's injured, who's going to be playing, especially with everyone sitting down. I didn't even mention people sitting down, but yeah. the ones that purposely choose to rest some of these games. So it's a little bit it's a little bit more complicated, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think in terms of like fantasy hockey, you have a lot of different positions to cover, and you just have a lot of different points to kind of think about. Obviously, Evan Bouchard is a young defenseman who is a scoring threat as well but in terms of fantasy hockey you also need to worry about say you want your centers your forwards to kind of score you the goals get you the assists and then also your defensemen since fantasy hockey is so versatile in terms of scoring to kind of get you the hits the penalty minutes so it's kind of like a weird thing and that's why I highlight a guy like Evan Bouchard because he is kind of in the back line he's the he's a fenceman his job is to stop uh, offensive attacks so it's kind of interesting to see how these different fantasy sports obviously in fantasy basketball where points are more at a premium kind of see how different positions play into it so I'm going to start off with you Nelson what do you think is one of the more valuable positions in terms of fantasy sports whether it be basketball hockey what have you 
I think probably like the center position is Absolutely. Be your most um, it, it really all it all depends. Whichever player can accumulate the most stats at every um, in every category, that's going to be the best player. So it's like it could be anyone. It could be Jokic, it could be Giannis. Those usually are the top two picks in any sort of fantasy draft because they can get a lot of points. And they can also get a lot of rebounds on a consistent basis. So players like that, that, that can get um, the scoring done as well as like the rebounding and every other stat. Usually it's rebounding because that's a relatively easy stat to get if you're, um, especially if you're a center or if you're one of those players that um, actually hunts for rebounds. It's why Luka Doncic was such a steal and has always been a steal in every single in every single draft. Same with Russ when in, in 2017 when he was. Averaging the triple double, that was the that was the king of fantasy um, at the time in 2017, and so it's like now the king is like Jokic. So it really it's more so the player than than the position, and you usually try to find the players that can accumulate the most stats. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Eric? How do you feel about this kind of position-driven mindset in terms of playing fantasy? Terms of playing fantasy, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, I think hockey players they get subbed out, right, like super quick. Yeah. And sometimes they're on the ice for like maybe two minutes tops, and then they go out, and then you don't know when they're gonna come back. So you're kind of sitting there watching the game. You're like, come on, stop that game, you bum. But like in football, definitely the quarterback would be a huge, you know, point stealer and a running back and a, a, um, a targeted wide receiver. But it's, it's hard to predict because a lot of these times when you're doing the draft or when you're setting your lineup or when you're picking your dudes, um, you're anticipating some sort of like production from them. And it's just like sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have a hard, you know, a tough game. Sometimes they get the, the yips, uh, as I like to call them. Uh, I think that they forget how to do their job, you know, kind of like what Kyrie did on last night's game. But, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, honestly, it's very important when you pick your, um, you know, the people that are going to be representing your fantasy league, and especially in hockey, especially in hockey, such a fast-paced environment. Um, you know, I don't know exactly how the scoring goes in hockey, mm-hmm. but you know, I can imagine like you know, like what Nelson saying that like how the center, the forwards, they get up to the ice and they try to score. So you know, I can imagine something like that. Before I let you guys go, I just want to know who do you think is going to be one of the breakout fantasy players in any sport next year? We have a lot of exciting young players in every sport, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting question. I know it's a tough question, and I'll start off with you, Nelson. Who do you think is going to be a breakout fantasy player in basketball terms? Victor. Victor, yes. <laughs> I know Eric's the Spurs fan here, so that will make him very happy, so... <laughs> All right, Eric. I know that Victor's a hard one to top, but do you think you can top him there? Oh man! I'd rather, you know, I'd rather walk off a cliff right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. In terms of the NBA, um, a breakout fantasy star, I would say probably I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jason Tatum. I think okay. He's gonna find his way. Okay. I think yeah. I think they're gonna. Um, you know, he's going to step it up during the playoffs because a lot of people said that he's not the guy and he lets yeah. his team down. He only scores like, you know, 20 buckets and whatever. But no, I think he's actually going to step it up. I think um, I still have the Mavs in six. Okay. So, um, you know, I can come back on the podcast and you guys can ask me when the Boston starts at the end. Yeah, man. Uh, but, uh, yeah, honestly, probably Jason Tatum. Okay, that's, that's a nice pick, obviously, as a Celtics fan. I appreciate that. But that should just about wrap up the segment, and unfortunately, that will end these fellas' time on this show. But before you go, do you guys have any goodbyes to say? Uh, Want to rep your podcast? I'll give you a couple of minutes to give you a little spiel, if you will. Starting with you, Eric. All right, guys. Are you ready to, you know, to go into the world of professional wrestling, sports, entertainment? Oh, yeah. I take you on a journey every night at 8 p.m. Pacific time, 11 p.m. Eastern time for the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. We talk about everything professional wrestling, all your favorite stars, 
and sometimes we do have that entertainment pop uh, pop culture kind of uh, you know kind of crossover. So you always know the the podcast is going to be very entertaining. I can make you a wrestling fan just give two minutes of your time, thousand and ten percent. So don't be you know don't be too shy. Don't All too right, shy. man, that's my man Easy E right there, Nelson. I know you're a simple man. Any last words from you, my friend? Uh, just go check out the basketball podcast. The finals are starting. Yeah. And All right, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you. We will see you uh, maybe in a couple of weeks. Who knows? Maybe there will be some different guests. So thank you guys for being on my pod. Really appreciate it, guys. My pleasure. Thank you, Chris. No Thank you, man. Have a good one. You too, man. So let me get reoriented here. Coming up next on the GSMC Fantasy Podcast. What a fun experience that was. You're going to have to listen to me for the next couple of minutes. But uh, we should have some very good segments ahead. Coming up next, we will have the rookie mock draft. I will be analyzing a rookie mock draft I did in this next couple of episodes. And stick around to the end of the show. I'll be giving you more Euros action, how to play fantasy soccer, and also analyzing my Euros fantasy team. You don't want to miss it. We will be right back on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without